Hello and thank you for tuning in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant John Perrine, the Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police Indianapolis District. The Roadshow is brought to you each and every week by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the State Police Alliance. For more information about our sponsor, you can visit them at www.indianasfinest.com. We want to thank our partners and friends at uh, MS Communication Network Indiana for helping get us on the radio waves each and every week. BK, Brendan King, pushing the buttons and helping us uh, each and every way, or each and every week. Uh, we so appreciate them. Our good friend Tom Trials behind the camera. Uh, to get us on the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, uh, like those videos, and uh, we can uh, keep getting them, that content on YouTube. There's a lot of content. If you've never checked out the Indiana State Police YouTube page or channel, um, there, there's an, um, you, you could spend days uh, watching some of our historical videos that are there, catch up on all the road shows. Uh, so check out the Indiana State Police YouTube channel. Our guest uh, to, coming to us today from uh, southeast Indiana, the Versailles District, is uh, Sergeant Steel, Stephen Wheelis, who's the PIO down there. Stephen, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, always appreciate catching up with, with you and hearing some things that are happening in your district. Right. And, uh, let's start with the Versailles District, kind of geographically. Where is it and what counties do they cover? Yeah, so when I tell people I'm from the Versailles District, they're like, oh. Where's that? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. not one of those big cities in Indiana. It's re- relatively a small town. I call it no man's land. It's yeah. kind of the the area, the triangle between Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and Louisville. So it's the far southeast corner of the state. Um, we cover 10 counties in that area. So it's a large district that we cover a lot of the area, and most of it is a rural district. Yeah, and so Versailles uh, is, has I-74, I-65, um, I-64. So we have I-74, I-65, and actually I-275. So it's a very small stretch of I-275. Is that that, there when you're like leaving Cincinnati and you say, welcome to Indiana? That's right. Welcome to That's exactly it. You will blink and you'll miss Indiana if you're traveling 275. That's got to be a a, difficult stretch to patrol. Yeah, it's not not patrolled probably as often as maybe we could, but uh, we have some troopers down there that I hear them out there regularly patrolling that stretch. Yeah, and you might have to look twice when you see an Indiana trooper and you think you're in Kentucky or Ohio. That's right. It's so, very quick. Uh, but no, Versailles is uh, one of those unique districts that, that covers a big rural area. And therefore, right. the troopers that work the Versailles district, they have to wear a lot of hats. They That's have right. to be prepared for different types of calls that maybe we don't get up That's in the right. metro area. Yeah, you know, in the bigger districts that, you know, as far as where the big cities are, you know, a lot of a lot of time spent on, on the highways and, you know, dealing with the crashes and the traffic and stuff that we don't do quite as much. Um, we do have I-65 as our busiest road. So um, the troopers that work uh, on what would be our zone one, uh, which is Bartholomew Jackson County, um, we cover from the 35 mile marker to the 80 mile marker of I-65. It seems like it's been under construction for about that's, 17 that's years right. now. But it's, uh, boy, it's a huge <laughs> improvement now. They, those crews have done great jobs to get those. Uh, we're going six lanes through a big stretch of that that area. So it yeah. does make it a lot better. But you know, we have troopers that work out there regularly and it keeps us very busy in those areas. Whereas, you know, we have Switzerland County. People don't even know where Switzerland County is. Vivian, Ohio yeah, County, right? that's right. And, uh, you know, policing is very different in those areas. You're out in the in the rural communities. You're meeting the people. You uh, know a lot of the local people. You work closely with the sheriff's departments. And, and you're responding to those types of calls of your thefts and your criminal mischiefs and your domestic disturbances and, and things like that. So they're, they're handling different kind of calls than we may get, you know, on the other side of our district. Yeah, and again, and it's a big district, and so you cover those ten counties twenty four seven. That's right. And um, the it tends to be some of the bigger investigations that happen down right. there, but also some big crashes. I know you guys That's have right. had some significant uh, crashes, and you're one of the crash reconstructionists. Right. So, kind of talk about what happens when a big, uh, a fatal crash or a crash that closes the highway for a long time, and people right. think. Why is it closed for so long? Maybe answer some of those yeah. questions. Yeah, you know, so I sixty five, of course, is our biggest biggest road, and that's where we do unfortunately see a lot of those big crashes. Anytime you have construction zones, you're gonna, you know, you're you're taking people that are driving on a main road and they're having a lot more space and the speeds are higher and you know they get to a construction zone and people for some reason just aren't slowing down like they should. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so, it's important to note is. The construction zone isn't what's causing the crash. It's right. people's driving behavior That's in right. that zone, That's just like right. when with winter weather. It's not yeah. the weather's fault. So, um, but w- that's why it's so important when you hear us say, 
change your driving behavior. That's right. Uh, it's because of these crashes. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're you got traffic that's slowing. Um, you know, as they should for the workers, and you know, it's important that everyone does that because it takes that one person to not slow down and and can and can cause a serious, you know, tragic accident in a lot of situations. So, uh, you know, we do investigate those crashes. Usually, that falls on the state police to investigate those crashes. Um, anytime there's a serious personal injury or fatality, we'll call in. Uh, you know, we have highly trained re- crash reconstructionists all around the state. Uh, you know, to investigate these crashes. And, um, you know, we'll try to get those roads open as soon as possible. Um, and I think technology has really helped us in doing that. You know, for un- unmanned aerial vehicles that we're able to use to diagram some of these crashes and some other tools, we're not having to close roads down as, as long as we had in the past. So we're going to get those roads open, but it's important that you are in crash investigators really take the time to um, make sure we can provide all the answers to a family that's tragically maybe lost a loved one. Well, and, and that's what I tell people is that we un, we know that the road closure is an inconvenience. Right. And, and one of our priorities is to get that open. But our biggest priority is sometimes we only get one chance at this. That's right. right? Once these vehicles move, once these the scene is opened up, right. um, it's really difficult to come back and make an investigation. And we've got questions that have to be answered. Right. And the evidence is there. We've got to find it. Yeah. And that's what I always tell tell people is, you imagine being that family that's lost a loved one. They want answers of what happened, why their loved one lost their life, or why their loved one is, is seriously injured. And uh, we take it personally. We feel we all have family, and we feel like you know it's our duty to provide those answers. And we do only have one chance. And so we want to make sure we do it right, and we, we you know uncover every piece of information we can when a crash happens to provide that for the family. So, um, and I am lucky to work with some great crash reconstructionists down in our area of the state. I'm kind of stepping back from that now. And, uh, you know, because I do have some guys that are just very knowledgeable when it comes to crash reconstruction. And, um, so they typically take, take over most of those crashes and then do an excellent job at, at what they do. Yeah. And, and Versailles is a, a rather large district. And, um, several years ago, probably back around 2010, they, they kind of took on the Seymour district, That's which right. made it more geographically larger. That's right. And I, I had the privilege of being out of both districts. I was originally out of the Versailles district and, um, Seymour is actually my home district. So I transferred back there and, and in 2005 and then in 2010, that's correct. Seymour district being one of the older districts in the state, um, you know, we closed our posts down, and, and all three of the counties from the Seymour District was absorbed by um, the Versailles District. We also pulled in Franklin County from the Connorsville District, and that that made us – got us to that 10-county area. So, you know, we did have two posts pulled together, and, it, you know, it created some issues up front trying to – how logistically, how is that going to work? Um but man, we work with a resilient bunch of guys, and uh, you know, are willing to change, and so um, it's been very smooth. And we've come up with some solutions to those issues that cr- were created when when two posts um, you know joined each other. Yeah, and so talk about the the day to day at the Versailles District when Trooper Marks uh, on duty. What are kind of some of the things they could expect to be involved right. in? Uh, and then we know there's no expectation. That's right. But. Well, you know, it's a big district, and like I said. It, it, someone in zone one is going to do something very different than someone in zone two. Uh, you know, zone one is typically our I-65 guys. They're going to be out on, they, they can expect to um, patrol that interstate and, and look for those uh, uh, stranded motorists, uh, crashes that have happened. And, uh, it, you know, it's I, I feel good about the guys I have working over there because they mark on and the, and the first thing they do is they go out and they do a, a check of that interstate stretch, that 40-mile stretch. They're checking first thing in the morning, making sure no one's been stranded there overnight. Everyone's got what they need, got the help they need. Um, you know, so our guys do that, and then they're, they're ready to respond to, to calls. Guys in rural districts, you know, they have their areas. They're going to check. Um, crime still happens in rural areas. It doesn't just happen in big cities, maybe on different levels. Um, but um, they're going to be, be patrolling, knows where they're – areas are where there's criminal activity taking place they're going to patrol those areas and um you know to be ready for whatever call that's a good thing about the state police we're we're highly trained in a lot of areas um maybe not specific experts at one specific area but you know they're we're capable of of investigating a number of different things and um our guys are are very well prepared at doing that yeah and then in those more rural areas um our troopers rely on the relationships with the sheriff's departments, right. the local departments, um, and vice versa. Um, it, it's a teamwork concept right. to, to provide 
safety for the community and that's yeah. what the number one goal is yeah and that's very true in a rural area that we we, we rely heavily on on those other agencies and they rely on us because um there may be you may be a trooper you may be patrolling a whole county by yourself you know on night shift especially um you don't have anybody else for backup other than other agencies so it is important that we you know work on those relationships uh, we often take a support role in those areas because you know the, the calls often come into the county sheriff's departments the local pd um the nice thing is with technology our guys monitor those radio channels and can hear when those calls come out um they're not going to rely on dispatcher to call another dispatcher to let them know what's going on they're going to be listening to that agency and they're going to be able to respond before they're ever asked if they hear a call if shots fired or a domestic or something like that a burglary in progress our, our guys are going to respond and they're going to they're going to be there for that police department that needs assistance yeah and you know we talked uh, geographically where you are but the other th- unique thing about your job as a pio at that district is you don't just have one major media market that's that right. you're dealing with if you have an incident it could be the indianapolis media the louisville men- media or the cincinnati that's media right. or all three that's right and kind of talk about the difficulties in that sometimes yeah you know i i tell people because people think for sales oh that's a rural district nothing ever happens there's no you know 10 county obviously you're going to get some big things happening um and i do have to kind of juggle um, three major television markets or you know media markets where you know you have all those media outlets from those three major cities that uh, you know and maybe PIOs in other parts of the state are dealing with one or maybe two. Uh, I kind of get pulled in three different directions and uh, it, it creates some challenges. But you know the media is I enjoy working with them overall and have made a, good, a lot of good contacts in all three of those areas. So should I need something, I know I have people I can reach out to and. Um, get assistance but you know i do get it from three different areas and so it really keeps you on your toes to be able to coordinate dealing with making sure everybody gets the information they need so what what happens if you need to go to a new station in cincinnati are you allowed to drive your marked police car there i could that rarely happens though you know like again i talk about technology but um I, I have a good setup for doing Zoom calls and and things like that where if they need something on video where they don't have a crew um you know, I can I can set up a Zoom and and, and coordinate that, um, but very rarely do I have to go to Cincinnati or Louisville, um, you know, in their studios. But uh, certainly would be available and, and could do that if I would need to. Yeah, and and we recently spoke to a, a couple of sergeants from the Jasper District that spoke about their ACP or All Crimes Policing Team, uh, and that is a, a team of troopers that have been that this administration uh, has kind of assigned each district to, who. Um, are really focused on criminal interdiction. They're looking right. for uh, the entry level criminal person, and they're going to build that case That's on right. up and on up. And so, talk about some of the things your ACP team is doing. Yeah. So, you know, our district, as many districts around the state, has an ACP team that you know has just they've taken off. You know, they've been given some freedom to do these investigations, and boy, they just run with it, and they keep me busy because they're providing me with information of of all these traffic stops that turned into criminal investigations and things so um yeah they're they're very hard addicts sergeant adam bullock runs that squad at our district um has done a phenomenal job with that um we have a couple different sides to our acp team maybe other districts don't have Um, we have some guys that are strictly criminal interdiction on our highways so they're they're hitting i-65 they're going to i-74 they're kind of splitting their time between major roadways um looking for those people that are conducting criminal activity on our roadways Mm -hmm. conducting traffic stops getting drugs getting guns uh, wanted people stolen items off the streets Um, and then we have another side to our acp team and they do um, more they get a tip of criminal investigation going on at a hotel at a residence Um, they take that information gather intelligence and and you know conduct that investigation how they 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 can do and it usually turns into you know a lot of times seizing stolen items guns drugs and and making arrests and prosecutions in those cases so uh, it's been very successful um you know as the team eventually evolves we have people that'll leave for you know other jobs that they've got on the department there's always someone stepping up wanting in um we get them trained and um, they hit the ground running and and have a lot of success very cool you've been tuned into the road show and our guest is sergeant stephen wheelis from the versailles district kind of giving us a glimpse into the day-to-day operations at the versailles district uh, one of our rural districts but also geographically uh, one of our largest That's districts right. and so um, we certainly appreciate you coming all the way up and and discussing that yep. and uh here we are this time of year with winter weather driving and we're asking everybody to be careful pay attention right. 
every time you leave the house, you have to expect that those roads could deteriorate very quickly. That's right. So um, you've been tuned into the Indiana State Police Roadshow brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the State Police Alliance. Uh, again, guest with Sergeant Stephen Wheelis from the Indiana State Police for Sales Post. Uh, for more information about the Indiana State Police or our hiring efforts, visit www.indianatrooper.com. We are currently hiring and applications are due March 27th.